Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Networking at Scale. It's great to be back, especially during these exciting times as we get to experience AI transform every walk of our life. Over the last year, we have seen a massive explosion of AI products. Most of us use some form of coding assistance to boost our productivity. Internally, at Meta, we developed SevMate, an LLM-based tool that identifies the top five code check-ins that could be causing this outage, providing targeted insights to the investigator, thereby reducing outage time. I also rediscovered the coder in me, and along the way, learned the new genre, vibe coding. On the personal and consumer side, our interactions with the various chatbots and personalized AI assistants have continued to increase as they gain more and more intelligence. AI is also changing the consumer product landscape by introducing new surfaces like wearables, meta Ray-Ban glasses. One of my favorite use cases, I can participate in conversations with Spanish telco operators as I get live translation. As AI infrastructure builders, over the past two years, we have hit major milestones, scaled unsurmountable peaks, delivered at scale. Yet, we all collectively feel the journey is just getting started. We are barely scratching the surface of AI products and its landscape. The future of AI is yet to be written. The other thing AI has done, it has made infrastructure relevant. Front page news of mainstream media. It has made infrastructure important and sexy. Compute scaling continues to be a key differentiator in the success of AI race. We have all seen the number of GPUs grow in our fleets and grow at a rapid pace. Early last year, we started building large AI clusters. We built two 24K clusters, one on Rocky and one on Infinity Band, a power envelope of roughly 30 megawatts. Towards the end of the year, we went to 100K plus. But we also established Rocky as the protocol of the future. And now we're well on our way to a million plus, a gigawatt plus cluster. When you look at AI, every single graph goes up and to the right, including the capex spend of all hyperscalers. This graph gives a lot of grief to my financial business partners, but brings a lot of joy to all the suppliers in this room. <laughs> we spent a lot of money enabling NICs, building large-scale Ethernet fabrics. In addition to providing interconnects, network is also responsible for abstracting the hardware. The network collective and communications library stack is responsible for abstracting GPUs, the location of GPUs, the physical distance, topology, etc., to the model layer. On the AI algorithm side, we have had an industry-wide pivot from dense to sparse mixture of expert style models. This is because for the same amount of compute, flops, MOE models give better model quality. 
MOE LLMs activate a subset of parameters relevant to an expert to answer a particular query. But the total number of parameters scale based on the number of experts. Thereby, the network and storage checkpointing needs to scale as well. From a network communication and collectives perspective, the complexity lies in the unpredictability of traffic patterns. In CAST, network congestion rather than data volume use. The most exciting thing that has happened in recent times is the birth and origin of reasoning models. They are fundamental and foundational to agentic AI, chain of thought, and allowing AI systems to autonomously make decisions. Reinforcement learning plays a big part in this. In RL, we have decoupled actors producing data and trainers consuming them. There are two important portions of the stack, generator and trainers. In simple terms, generator produces output tokens based on current model parameters and some inputs and sends it to the trainer. Trainer evaluates it and gives it a reward score and sends it back to the generator. Generator then updates its model parameters and tries to increase the probability of generating output tokens that maximize reward. Generators and trainers have a loose dependency, but should also be able to independently move forward. This type of one-sided communication blends itself more towards traditional distributed systems rather than tightly coupled HPC collectives. Gone are the days where we can fit a model in a single multi-node GPU. We have started building backend networks even for inference, making it distributed. Now, let's take a request, which is usually a combination of a query and a prompt. The time to first token is in the order of seconds, and that comes from the prefill portion of the inference stack, which is both compute and memory bandwidth intensive. The time to incremental token, which is in the order of milliseconds for good user experience, comes from the decode portion of the inference stack. Here, we end up with a large number of smaller collective operations, but they are both memory and network latency sensitive. We need to have our infrastructure support to the ever-shifting AI workloads, whether it be large-scale training, distributed training, reinforcement learning, or distributed inference. None of this matters if we are not able to provide great product experiences to the billions of users that use Meta's platforms today. How do we do this? We build for optionality. We build for scale. We take big, bold bets. To Africa, a cable system that we envisioned a few years back. It's the largest, longest cable system in the world that is going into production by the end of the year. To Africa alone increased the capacity of the region by 3x, brought tremendous reliability to the African continent, and connected hundreds of millions of users. So we figured, if we can build one, why not another? Earlier this year, 
we announced Project Waterworth. Raise the bar a little. It is a 50,000 kilometer cable, which is the circumference of the Earth. It connects five continents, crosses three oceans, and will feature some of the newest technologies like 24-pair fiber system. At the other end of the spectrum, megawatts is the fundamental unit of scale for all AI infrastructure. You all must have seen Mark's post talking about us building two large clusters, Prometheus and Hyperion. Hyperion, which is in Louisiana, when built out to scale, is the size of Manhattan and can scale up to five gigawatt of power, which means we also need to invest in newer power sources like geothermal. Earlier this year, we ran an RFP for nuclear. Whether it is connecting billions of users or interconnecting data centers, networking needs to be everywhere. This is a picture of the duct bank that we are building in our Prometheus cluster in Ohio. It's about 13 and a half million kilometers of fiber that is being pulled just for the outside plant, which is 3,000 times the distance between New York and LA, 1,500 coast-to-coast -coast round trips. As we scale data centers and networks, the rack ecosystem is also changing. We are all used to a single unit of one rack. Now that unit is a collection of racks, including air-assisted liquid cooling. We are trending towards double-wide, double-width density racks, which means we might have to end up looking at newer technologies like optics over copper, integrating CPO, OCI, and beyond. AI has made us start to look at vertically integrating physical infrastructure design, starting from data center, networks, liquid cooling from a new lens. It is great if we have time to plan these things, but we also know the only constant is change, and change is coming at us at a rapid pace. We need to also be nimble and flexible and be able to pivot, like building tents. In our Prometheus cluster, to speed up the delivery of data center buildings, we resorted to building tents. Now, tents in isolation is a single unit 30 megawatts of power, pretty straightforward to interconnect. But now, think of a fleet of tents coupled with existing data center buildings. You might end up with a single tent housing the regional network connectivity. Think about the DR and reliability implications as you design the network topology and fiber layout. We also need to start to revisit our fabric topology. As the GPU roadmaps evolve, as the NIC roadmaps evolve, we need to start to think about looking at newer topologies like NSF. We have talked about planning for scale, hacking it for pivots, like tents, how about 
tuning it for performance. Over the last two years, we have spent a lot of time iterating, understanding the GPU stack, the NIC stack, fabrics, playing around with routing algorithms, congestion protocols, to get the maximum cluster effective throughput. Performance continues to, be, to have more constraints and more variables on a day-by-day -day basis. One of them is scale-up. The scale-up domain continues to increase. We were at eight GPUs. Now we are at 72, and we are trending towards 144 and beyond. As the model paradigms change, we need to represent all the GPUs in the scale-up domain as one large GPU, a flat memory fabric. For this, we need an efficient open standards transport protocol that optimizes for high bandwidth and low latency. The other important variable is distance. When we built our 24K cluster, we were able to contain the GPU to GPU distance between five and 10 kilometers. It's very easy. In our Prometheus cluster, it is starting to go towards 100, stretching the boundaries of RDMA. Tomorrow, we might even go towards the WAN. As network engineers, we all know when distance increases, we get more latency, more packet loss, more congestion, and faults. The chart on the right just has a snapshot of what happened with our Llama 3 training. Now, the faults could be GPU going down, a link going down, a router going down, or a fiber going down. Again, as network engineers in the room, we could say, what's the big deal? A link goes down, we identify it, we take it out of business, traffic readouts, everything is hunky-dory. But fault tolerance and fault management takes on a whole new dimension when it comes to synchronous GPUs and jobs in the HPC world. We need to be proactive in identifying faults. We need better network congestion algorithms. We also need efficient transport that can work with lossy links and congested links. Finally, we are also seeing interoperability between different generations of GPU and different hardware vendors. In some cases, custom silicon as well. We need the compute, the collectives, and the transport to be closed and, and, co and tightly coupled and co-designed. In addition to providing petabits and petabits of connectivity, the network software stack should blend the goodness of vertical integration of HPC and marry the principles of distributed systems as we scale. Between the unpredictability of research in AI and rapid innovation in AI models, we need to come together as an industry of peers and colleagues to continue to innovate by planning for the long term, at the same time pivoting for the short term, embracing the journey of defining the future. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great at scale today.